soon one morning when this life is over. Rootin' tootin'. Good. How's it down in Kansas? It's gusty. We got a gust yeah. front coming through. No flying tonight for anybody, huh? No. It uh, it hit pretty hard around 6 o'clock, so we're grounded. But it's nice. It's been like over 100 degrees every day, and so at least it's going to blow away all the heat. It's going to get cooler tomorrow, and then Friday and Saturday are looking really good for flying. Oh, good. Yeah, we uh, calmed down and cooled off, and we're down into the 30s at night <laughs> starting tonight, I think. I had to go dig up some of my uh, plants that Justin Weaver helped me plant right after I had surgery out in the yard, and just to get them some good sunshine during the summer that the deer ate, and now I'm bringing them in all stubbled. <laughs> I am representing, though, because I'm working the registration hangar and parking people. So we got Jade's paramotor hat, paramotor wife. <laughs> paramotor <Yeah>. pilot pants. <laughs> nice. I got I to meet Alex Donicky. Uh I don't know if I said his last name right. He was the former vice president of the USPPA. Yeah. And uh, I registered him and parked him. So this was like his first impression of me. And we were like immediate friends. <laughs> nice. Did he want to order some stuff right away too? 
I think he probably wouldn't like that. <laughs> wouldn't like that or would? Would. <laughs> oh. Well, if anybody wants to get any of that attire that Steve is wearing, you can get check it out at tomahawktees.com. No, so it's on that website yet. So, and Deweese, how are you? I'm doing very well. So, anything new this week for you? Uh, no, I'm doing fine. No? No more flying? No, not yet. No? Okay. I'm still pretty happy that you got to fly and um, pretty cool video of you uh, with your cool little mask on and <laughs> stuff. So. so, hey, guys, um, we got this really cool lady that is actually at a fly-in. She's from North Carolina, but she is in Utah right now, so she can talk about that. And I guess her husband also does flying, and she's done a lot of stuff. So she, they're both retired and basically on the road, like some of our other friends, living the dream. And bless you. <laughs> you really need to get your cleavage some sun there, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting like gray chest hairs. It's weird. I'm only 37. <laughs> living too hard. <laughs> All right. None of this now. So let's introduce Cheryl Morgan. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, well, <laughs> thanks for having me. Welcome to our craziness. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me. Um, yeah. And I have to get to, to Millie Wallace, who uh, at a, the paragliding pixie fly in, she asked those of us who are there, any of us who'd be willing to chat with you yeah. to reach out to you so i did and you were so friendly i really appreciate it I, yeah i appreciate the opportunity to be able to share my story or some of my stories with some of your audience because uh you know hey it's it's all an adventure right and right. we all got into this for the adventure i think yep exactly so tell us first where you're at I'm in Monroe, Utah, which is the center of Utah. If you split it north, south, east, west, it's smack dab in the center. And um, it's a wonderful place for paragliding. There are launches that go as high as 11,000 feet, even though the valley's only 5,000 feet. That's still a pretty long sled ride, even if you don't catch any thermals. And there are multiple sites to launch from, and the, um, you can get pretty high. Um, last week, my husband got up to 16,000 and, wow. um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get up there this coming week. Uh, right now today, if you can believe it, we actually had thunderstorms here. So there was no flying today. Oh, so James says, um, that you live near him. He's in Sanford and he flies, uh, is it Vass again? Vass? Yes, Vass. And he says he flies it weekly, especially Woodlake, since it's empty. Yeah, we had we had a lake in our neighborhood. And when Hurricane Matthew hit back in, what was it, 2018? I can't remember the year. Anyway, we ended up with 22 inches of rain. And the dam had to be, um, it started to leak. And so they ended up having to, um, uh, what do you call it, burst the dam or, you know, open the dam. And yeah. because of that, we don't have... Uh, lake anymore but we should get the dam fixed here shortly and then we'll have a lake back but yeah he's right and it is a neat place to fly over uh, it's a pretty area so I'm sure if you see a paramotor guy going by that's him <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so what kind of equipment do you have for paragliding let's start with that sport that you're you're with okay. right now yeah. yeah right now I fly a uh, rush five so my first canopy was a Buzz Z4, and then I moved on to a Rush 5. I'll probably go to the uh, lightweight version of that, a uh, Swift 6, in the next year or so. Um, and just got a new advanced lightness harness, so I get to try it here shortly. Uh, I was in a, a Delight uh, 3 harness, uh, which I enjoyed, and I loved my Buzz Z4. Man, I was like a tank flying that thing. But the uh, um, rush is much more responsive. I do enjoy flying it. It's a lot of fun. So how big is that wing? I have a medium small. And it's all based on your weight. 
Oh. Yeah, it's not based on, you know, like... Um, the meters? On, it, I probably... I'd have to look it up to tell you the meters. Oh. But, it, but it goes by your weight. Unlike skydiving, where you your canopy size doesn't necessarily have to go by your weight, you can overweight it and still be safe to land and things like that. With okay. uh, with free flight canopy, top part of that weight range when you're flying. So how, how long have you been flying? How long have you been doing paragliding? I started paragliding in 2014. And uh, I went to learn at Point of the Mountain. So when I met my husband, he had been a paraglider since the early 2000s. And so we introduced each other to our uh, sports because when I met him, I was a skydiver. I've been skydiving since 1996. And so... He introduced me to paragliding. I introduced him to skydiving. So I went to learn at Point of the Mountain and uh, uh, spent two weeks there and was able to get my P2. I think part of the reason I was able to, to progress uh, so quickly is because I did have the paragliding background. So, you know, my first flight being in the air under a canopy was not um, sensory overload for me because I'd already spent so much time underneath the canopy. Uh, skydiving now that being said there are two different sports uh flying a paraglider and flying a uh, skydiving canopy are two different things but it did help me in the uh in the progression for sure having that background do you both still do the same sports both still skydive and paraglide yes, yes. Yeah. and it's it's funny because in skydiving i'm the more uh you know, I've got more time and experience in the sport and in paragliding, he's got more time and experience in the sport. So we kind of help each other, if that makes sense mm -hmm. um, with, with those. But yeah, that was, uh, yeah, I started um, skydiving in 1994. So I had finished school and I wasn't, you know, at that point, it's like, what do I do? I'm done with school. I don't have to study. I'm working now. What, what do I do? So I, my mom and dad had come up to Virginia where I was posted at the time. And we went on a fishing trip and I found this little paper and they had a call out box. It was talking about tandem skydiving and they were having some kind of special thing for the 4th of July. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go try that. So I showed up at the drop zone. So my parents went home from the trip and stuff. And I, 4th of July weekend, I show up at the drop zone. I said, okay, I want to do a tandem skydive. And they looked at me and they looked, you know, around me and they said, well, where's your friend or friends? And I said, well, what are you talking about? And they said, you're here by yourself. I said, yeah. I said, I don't know anybody else who wanted to do this. They were just amazed that a woman would come out there by herself and want to do a tandem skydive. So I did one tandem. Liked it so much, did another one that same day. And then um, after that, the the next day, they wanted me to spend the night. They said, oh, spend the night with us and you can start advanced free fall training the next day. And I said, what, I can't spend the night. I don't have anything, you know, I don't have a sleeping bag. I don't have, you know, anything to spend the night so somebody went and got a t-shirt threw it at me somebody got a pair of shorts threw it at me somebody got a sleeping bag threw it at me but the thing that got me was when they gave me a brand new toothbrush and a container and some toothpaste and said here you go i said okay i'll spend the night and the next day i started aff training and then it all went downhill from there i think <laughs> but it was fun um and AFF training in skydiving involves um, the the first jump or first uh, four jumps, I think. Two, one, one, two, either three, first three or four jumps are with two instructors. One's hanging on either side of you as you exit the plane. And then that way, if you don't pull your pilot chute, one of them can pull it and you'll land underneath an open parachute. Well, I made it through that those first four and then uh, got up to, I think it was six or seven, where you had to do a backflip. And the first day we jumped out, 
to do the backflip. My instructor, you know, got in front of me like this and he does his backflip and I just keep going down and I look at him and he's like, do your backflip. And I just shook my head. I was like, they had talked about how much altitude you were going to lose doing a backflip. And I thought that meant I was going to do the backflip and smack into the ground. Don't know. Ask me why I thought that. So I'm like, no, I'm not doing this. So we land and he talks to me, go up again. And there were clouds in the sky, do the same thing, come down. He does his backflip. And I, you know, he does backflip. I look at him. I'm just like shaking my head. No, 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 no. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe this isn't for me. So it's like, okay, I'll give it one more time. Go up, do a third try, did my backflip, didn't lose all the altitude and hit the ground, did just fine, loved it, landed with a huge smile. And that's what, like, I don't know, that's what broke it for me. And then it's like, okay, yes, I want to do this. I'm enjoying this. I'm kind of frozen. All right, I'm back. You good? Sorry. Yep. Oh, that's Luis, okay. are you back? I'm, I'm kind of frozen. You're back. Oh, she's in and out. Yeah. And so, Jade, I know you. Uh, can, uh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I know you've been working on your private pilot, right? Um, slowly. Yes. Very slow. <laughs> so, so tell us, so tell us about had, that. So, yeah, that's what I was going to say. When, uh, I had about, I think it was 256 or 259 jumps. And so I'm a Southerner. So we have to tell a story to tell a story. So to tell you a story <laughs> about why I learned how to be a private pilot. I have to go back and tell you this other story. Okay. So, okay. Jump 256, 259. I had jumped or uh, downsized to a smaller canopy. And I was jumping. I was a static line instructor. And I'd let the students out. And I was coming in to land behind them. Well, one of them was crossing in front of me. So I turned a little bit to let him land. And when I turned back into the wind to land, I inadvertently did what's called a hook turn. So I was coming in pretty fast coming into the ground. And this is going to sound crazy, but I did think about this as I'm coming into the ground. Now, my canopy's coming down. Let's see if I can do it like 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 this. And I'm, you know, going to swing forward as I'm coming down to hit the ground in that uh, fast turn. So I'm thinking, OK, if I hit the ground full force face on, I could break my ribs, puncture a lung, you know, something like that really bad. But if I stick my leg out that might take part of the impact and then I wouldn't damage so much the rest of my body. I didn't do that. I stuck my leg out. I actually did think about this. <laughs> and then, so I hit and I rolled and stuff. And uh, when I kind of stopped, you know, got still, people ran over to me, you know, I'm like, uh, my, my right leg was hurting. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is uncomfortable. So I said, am I okay? And they looked at me and said, well, your foot's laying one way and your legs lay in the other. What do you think? Well, it ended up I had a compound tib fib fracture. Um, oh. so, yeah, kind of crazy. So I'm at this drop zone in Yuma, Arizona. And the people that come out to take me to the hospital, they didn't even know how to put a splint on the leg. So the fellows at the drop zone went and got car cardboard and tape and put it around my leg. Oh, and, and then they wanted to cut my uh, rig off of me. And I'm like, you're not cutting my rig off of me. It, this this costs too much. So I climbed out of my rig and then they cut my jumpsuit off. And they put the splint on my leg and they started bringing me to the hospital. And they said, would you like some pain meds? And I'm thinking, you guys don't even know how to splint a leg. You think you're going to put an IV in me? No. So they get me to the hospital. And I said, okay, we got to take x-rays. They bring me back into the x-ray room. They go to move my leg to take the x-rays. Now, at this point, that hurts, right? That really hurts. And so it was like, ah, you know, kind of said a few choice words. They brought in the morphine, knocked me out. When I woke up, I had this cast on my leg from my foot to my thigh. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So uh, long story short, with that, they decided rather than leave me in a cast, they were going to fixate the fracture since, you know, a, a compound fracture means the bones, instead of being together, they come apart like that. And so they uh, put a rod in my uh, tibia. And since they and three screws, so now I have a 
14 inch rod and three screws holding my right tibia together. But uh, I couldn't go weight bearing for a month after having that rod put in my leg. And uh, which was, you know, that was fine. Um, because it put me back together, you know, it, it uh, the rod in there, hold it, I didn't have to have cast on there. So since I didn't need all that, I, um, uh, I was driving everybody crazy because I was on convalescent leave and I don't watch TV and I don't do all this other stuff. So I was driving everybody crazy and they said, Hey, why don't you come down to the drop zone with us? And, you know, I couldn't skydive because I broke my leg. I said, okay, I'll come with you to the drop zone. And they had arranged with the, um, drop zone owner, excuse me, I'm going to have to be back in one second. I'll be right back. Sure. Where is Steve going? Where are we going, Steve? You're muted. Hey, I just want to say thanks for joining John Wayne, Nick Griffith, Bill H. Walters finally made it. And Shane Wyman. Joshua Marsh, Kelby Cox is in the house, Linda Anderson, uh, James. Thank you guys. Am I like running like a robot or is that just echoing? I don't know. It got like super loud in the hangar, so I was like, yeah, I'll just walk around and check oh, what's going on. That's Steve cracking up. So who was that? Just that was who was it that was uh, walking by the, looking upside down the, <laughs> the camera? Oh, that's Ron Turan where uh, Rain teaches. Ron, Ron Turan runs Lone Star Paramotor, and he's got the main hair. Uh, he, he brought a simulator. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, all his instructors have, like, musical instruments. So they'll, like, come and we'll have jam sessions. Because he's got... Uh, four or five younger guys that help teach. Oh, no, that wasn't Ron that was looking upside down on the screen, but it was somebody yeah, else. Ron. Hey, Ron. And then, yeah. uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Porta potties tipped over. What tipped over? Porta potties. Oh, oh, no. no. Oh. <laughs> And then, uh, the uh, out is, uh, Deanna Lucky and Alex Donaghy, uh, uh, Oh, no. And everybody's, like, trying to, like, put their stuff away because it's going to be rain tomorrow. And, uh, oh. Oh, nice. Uh, four for color one, I bet that's noisy. All right. But Share us back. Myself. Yep. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, so um, since I uh, I get so, to the drop zone, and the drop zone owner says, "Okay, Cheryl, I'm going to teach you to fly," and I'm like, "What?" And everybody had decided that since I had broken my leg and I couldn't skydive, that I was going to learn to fly. Now I'm on crutches at this time, so. I have to go out to the plane with my crutches, do my pre-flight in my crutches, put my crutches in the back of the plane. I get in the, you know, the, uh, the left seat, the pilot seat, and the instructor gets in the right seat. And he says, okay, take off. And I looked at him and I'm like, Stan, I don't know how to fly a plane. He's like, oh, you've been skydiving long enough. Just push the throttle in and take off. Now, let me tell you about Stan. Stan, the drop zone owner, was a crop duster pilot who had 22,000 hours of crop dusting. So there was not anything I don't think anyone could do to scare him. But I was certainly scared. So <laughs> most people learn to fly because they dream of being a pilot and things like that. I learned to fly because I broke my leg and was driving everybody crazy. So <laughs> I, uh, and bless his heart, he was... He was a he was a good instructor, but he was not a patient man. He just wanted to get me trained as quick as he could. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but since I was on convalescent leave, I had all the time in the world to study when I wasn't flying, which made for the perfect student, right? 
because I would right. study and come back and fly the next day. Um, but that would, so that's why I learned how to fly, which I know is not the normal way to learn how to fly, but that's, <laughs> that's my story. <laughs> All right. I've been trying to get the video of you and your mom doing a walk, but it says it's private. So I'm going to try to share, um, another one and you're giving your husband all the credit for the He's videos. Fine. Oh, he does a great job of putting the videos together. I'll go do it, th go do things and then come back and say, can you make a video for me? He's be <laughs> like, sure, <laughs> do it for me. Well, that's nice. Is this the one with my mom in West Virginia? No, um, no, I'm doing, I think the pigtail one. So I'm going to um, share that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll turn the volume down. So this was an event. We were trying to do a big way. And uh, I had gotten these. He calls it. Can you find Cheryl? <laughs> there I come, through. <laughs> <laughs> I come by the videographer. Perfect timing. Well, this company made these pigtails that they said would stay attached to your helmet with just spit. They would stay attached for 40 miles an hour. So what I did was I took some silicone and I attached them to my helmet. And not only did they work in the skydives, they worked great. They stayed on in the skydives, but of course, you know, they're going behind me, you know, flapping around in the air right. and they're, they would distract everybody. It was wonderful. Um, just, to, <laughs> just to be fun. Right. So I thought, well, let me try them in the wind tunnel. So I, uh, the, there's wind tunnel in Rayford, North Carolina. It's, it's not an I fly tunnel. It's a, um, a family owned, uh, by Paraclete, and it's 16 foot, so you can even do eight way in there. Well, uh, I was practicing with my four way team, and I had these, uh, you know, I still have these little um, pigtails on. And we trained, we probably did about an hour's worth of training in there, you know, in and out of the tunnel for an hour. And uh, one of them came off and went up into the blades and got chopped up. And after that, I was on restriction for ever having them in there. <laughs> Troublemaker. <laughs> oh boy. All right. I got um got one more. Let's share this. This one looks pretty cool. Yeah, this is when I went to uh Squim, Washington. And uh I told my husband, I said, I did something while I was out there. Can you put together a video for me? And uh so you, you spend uh, six hours learning how to climb uh, up in there. And wow. uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then once you, you get up on the top, then he starts doing uh, acrobatics with you, which is pretty cool. Going upside down, uh, that was pretty neat. <laughs> it was really a lot of fun. Do you have like a reserve there's, on. there's no parachute or anything all of my skydiving friends thought it was crazy for doing this <laughs> um, the wire that's attached to you so if you do fall you'll hang underneath the plane um and hopefully you can pull yourself back up before you have to land didn't we have another guest on that did that yeah that was um <laughs> hang on and then after you do the top then uh, you get to climb out to the side and lay down on those wires, which seems like it would be fun. I could tell you I left with bruises after oh, being on the wires doing acrobatics. It's like when you when you uh, <laughs> when you're in the anti G mode, it feels great, but then when you come around on the other part, it's like whoa, this is heavy. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. <laughs> But it was so much fun. It's in Swim, Washington, and it's called Mason Wing Walking. And they're, all, they're the only wing walking school in the United States. And they might be the only one in the world that allows you to actually go out and do this stuff. It was pretty cool. And when did you do this? That must have been, let's see, maybe 20... 2012, 2013, somewhere in that area. 
Wow. Yeah, I'd always wanted to do it. I'd given it a try in England, but they just put you on top and flew you around. You didn't get to climb out and do all that. That was way more fun to get to do that part. Because that's really wing walking is climbing out and getting yourself into place. Look at you. You're just hanging onto the cables. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty neat. <laughs> it's pretty scary. <laughs> Steve Clark says, Jade, I can totally see you doing that. Oh, heck no. <laughs> oh, it's no, no, no. <laughs> The hardest part is making sure that you don't put your foot through the fabric on their plane. There's a fabric colored, oh. fabric covered wings. So you, you know, that's why you have to spend all the time learning how to climb out. Oh, yeah. Out. I'll do it. I'll try anything five times. Yeah. <laughs> you go right ahead, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Oh man. Oh. Oh. The end. Uh -huh. Huh? All right. So let's see if I can find some else. Is there any questions in the chat for this crazy lady? <laughs> um, otherwise, I got another one here. Let's see what this one is. Let me give me a second to get to the share screen here. Uh, somebody, I think it was Nick Griffith, asked if she'd ever had to do a cutaway when she was skydiving. No. Yes, I've had uh, four cutaways. Uh, one, I was the my first one. I was doing a demo, and we were exiting a helicopter. And so when I went to exit, I went, you know, I went up, and my rig scraped the top of the door of the helicopter as I exited, and my uh, my mane came out of the bag and then twisted up above me. So there was no way it would have opened successfully. So I had to cut my mane away and open my reserve. Well, I was originally going to do crew or canopy relative work with my teammate, but because I had a cutaway, I just went ahead and landed. Now, our reserves are solid white, but the crowd didn't know. They just saw somebody land with this white canopy. Yay! You know, and I land and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I just had a reserve ride. <laughs> but no one in the crowd knew anything had gone wrong. <laughs> um, and then I've had, I had one where uh, I had hunting gloves on. It was really cold and I put these thick gloves on. I probably shouldn't have. And so when I went to reach for my pilot chute, I couldn't grab it. And so then I just went straight to pulling my reserve for that one. Um, mm -hmm. And the last one that I had, I was doing team training and my canopy uh, spun up above my head so much that the, the line twist came down and we're holding my head like this. And my canopy started to spin and it started to, to speed up spinning. So I just cut away at that point and uh, no, wasn't any problem. Made the, the, uh, made the next jump with my second rig. So it, it just, you know, everybody found my main and my reserve and we got it repacked that day. No problem. Wow. All just right. Concurrent with your emergency procedures is good. Okay. You ready? Um, so this is a paragliding video. My husband and I went to Europe in 2016 and we went to the Coupe Care, which is a free flight festival in Saint-Hilaire, France. And in the morning, uh, that one morning, the hot air balloons take off from a field 4,000 feet below us. And as the hot air balloons start to rise and the sun comes up, uh, we did uh, take off from that 4,000 foot launch, which you can see it's a beautiful grassy area. Um, you, you do a forward launch because there's you know, not much wind, but then you get to fly down amongst, in between, over and above and around and below the hot air balloons. And there were paragliders and hang gliders and hot air balloons. It was just, it was spectacular. That is my most memorable paragliding flight because it's just, it was just beautiful to be there, you know, with all those different forms of aviation flying together. It was just really, really neat. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, and the areas, oh my gosh, that area of France is so beautiful. Everything's green and lush.
but yeah, getting to fly amongst all those hot air balloons and uh, with everybody else at the same time, it was just wonderful. Hmm. Isn't it? It's just, it's just beautiful. My husband got so close to one of the hot air balloons that they hollered out at him and asked him what his name was. Okay, so which part, Wendy, are you asking what made you want to do this? I'm assuming it was the airplane one. <laughs> <laughs> Had you seen this before, she's asking. Oh, the, the wing walking? Yeah, I'm, I'm yes. assuming that's the one she's asking. Yes, I had seen it before, and, you know, I'm like, that looks pretty cool. I think I want to try that. I wonder if anybody offers a school for it. And that's why I lived in England, and I found the place where you could go, but they just strapped you up on top and did it. And then in the United, when I got back to the United States, I found the place in Washington that actually offers a school and allows you to do it. And I was like, yeah, I want to do that. And so I conned my mom into going with me for the day. And, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Wow. Bill H. So wants to know if, if she's ever thought about doing a paramotor. Um, I have. I have kited with a paramotor on my back. Um, the, the, but it weighed, like, what was it, 50 pounds? And I'm thinking, whoo, that's a lot to land with. So I haven't done one uh, like the, the paramotor on your back. I think the one, the trike, where you don't have to worry about landing with all that weight on your back might be more my speed. Oh, yeah. I fly a trike. Jade flies a trike, and it's wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm not sure if I want to land with 50 pounds on my back, 50, yeah. 50 extra pounds. Yeah. Try trike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got Dragonfly Journey. Oh, this is this is a great one. Okay, let's see if I can get this to come before up. Give me you, before you play it, let me do some intro for it before you play it. Okay. My husband was uh, working, and when he worked at the time, he, he was overseas. And so he had talked about, you know, I found this Moyes Bailey Dragonfly, which is a uh, uh, plane that they used. In, it was developed in Australia for two things, one for ranching and two for towing up hang gliders. And so he found one and he said, man, it's a really good deal. I'd like to get it. And I said, well, let's do it. Let's live. Don't live with woulda, shoulda, coulda. Let's, let's get the plane. He said, okay, but how are we going to get it back home? It's in Cincinnati, Ohio, and we live in Bass, North Carolina. And I said, well, silly, we'll just fly it home. What are you talking about? Because he thought we we're going to have to take it apart, put it in trailers. Like, no, we'll just fly it home. Okay, fine. So he gets back in November. And now I'm the one that said, let's fly at home. So we get up to Cincinnati, Ohio, and it was reasonable temperatures the day we got there. And we did a, you know, a couple of test flights in it and stuff like that before we start our journey home. We start our journey home and all of a sudden this cold front comes through and it took us more time to put on our clothes then it did the amount of time we could be in the air because the, the Dragonfly gas tank only has like an hour of fuel, right? And so we would fly for 45 to 50 minutes, but it would take us longer to put on the clothes to fly than it did for the hour flight that we had. It was pretty funny. And then as, as you're going through the video, I'll tell a little bit more of the stories, but that just sets the scene. And, okay. and remember, it was my idea to do this. <laughs> okay, here we go. And so this just shows. Um, oh, it helps if I hit play. Well, from North Carolina to Cincinnati. So, so we took a one way commercial flight up there. We had to go through the 40s while we were there. But this, here's the Morris Bailey Dragonfly. It's a, a tail wheel pusher plane. Um, And these were some of our practice flights at the uh, place where they used to fill up hang gliders. It's a pretty area. It's a fun little plane to fly. It cruises at 45 to 50 miles an hour. Yes, there are cars passing you down slow on the road. <laughs> Just flying it. But it can get up to altitude really quick. It's got a strong engine because it's, well, it's 
got lots of capability. Wow. Oh. It has a 60, or here's showing you all the different uh, places that we're going to stop along the way. I think we had 12 stops total along the way. And uh, these were our buddies, our time buddies, our little stock monkeys. And uh, we would take turns. My husband and I are both pilots. And so this is a tandem uh, plane. So whoever was in front was the pilot and the person in the back is co-pilot. And you can see how many clothes we had on, right? Trying to stay warm. Um, this is pretty, this was one, you know, looking down, you could see some of the uh, crop fields uh, that they had. And uh, it seemed like we either had weather issues or we had problems with um, some of the mechanical stuff with the plane. Uh, what we thought was going to be a three-day trip ended up being a two-week trip. Uh, it was pretty funny. You can see the gas tank there. It's a five-gallon gas tank. Um, so we had about an hour's worth of fuel and, uh, we could, we had to pick stops that were close enough where we could stop, you know, every 50 miles or so. Right. And yep. so the, one of the places we stopped, if we had left the next morning, we would have had a quartering tailwind to get there. And it was like 49, 49 miles to get to the next point. And you can see our little radios that we have hooked up there. Um, we jury rigged everything because they didn't have it set up for cross country flights. We kind of jury rigged everything ourselves. But um, uh, when we stopped in Hazard, Kentucky, we ended up having a problem with the starter. And when we ended up not being able to leave the next day. And so the day we did leave, we had a quartering headwind. And so we were concerned about fuel. And since it's a, an experimental ultralight, you can pretty much do whatever you want to with it. So we went and got a two and a half gallon gas tank at Walmart and we jury rigged it up on top of the one that we have there. And halfway through the flight, Mike had to siphon it. Siphon it as in open it up, take a hose, put it in, suck it out and put it in the other one. And sure enough, it worked and we had enough fuel to get there. It was pretty funny. This is Mike fixing the, the starter issues that we had. Um, it was quite interesting. And that's the jury rig tank there that was ready to make our long crossing. And this and took two weeks? It ended up taking two weeks because we had to stop for weather and stop for mechanical stuff. And again, I hate to do this. I will be back in one minute. I'm sorry. Sure. <laughs> All right, Steve, your turn. Okay. Um, I don't know. Nothing really new going on. Had somebody trying out the simulator. Got Who's Jerry in there Fly. with you? Who is that? Who's uh, that? Jerry Fly. He does Patriot Paramotor. In oh, Georgia. yeah, yeah. Hey, Jerry. How's it going? And then uh, the guy who does my stickers, uh, so I fly with him actually in Omaha, but he's got a, he does like a bunch, including some scantily clad, you know, women. So I'm going to try to get him to do one of uh, me and something skimpy, maybe just to, oh, you know, boy. but <laughs> I think the jousting one was pretty cool. <laughs> and then he did my, uh, that's my hot yep. butter Steve Frog sticker he did for me. Yep. Um, here's that training simulator again. So there's fans oh, yeah. that blow on you. And then you basically oh, really? get uh, an Oculus Rift and you control everything with brake toggles. And, and people are pretty impressed by it. They're like, it makes me sick. You could do barrel rolls and stuff and they give you a throttle. Uh, I haven't tried it out yet, but I, I will tomorrow. They want you to do it when it's like morning and cooler. Otherwise, it gets pretty steamy and hot in there. Yeah. And I'm, I'm already hot enough. It can only take so much. <laughs> yep. But totally. Winds calmed down. Uh, we had porta potties blow over while stuff was happening. So luckily, I didn't see stuff go. Let's go see how bad it is, actually. I'm curious. Okay. So. Oh, Hopefully, your skirt doesn't blow up. <laughs> I think it's actually fine. I think they pumped it right before it blew over. Okay, so we're good. 
Yes, yeah, it's super, super windy. Wow. Not, there's probably like half as many people here as there was last year just because it blew out. Okay, she's back. I'm a mute. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh. So do you want me to can oh I didn't hit pause. So oh, that's okay. I'm gonna go I'll start it again or continue. Oh it. no, you don't have to. That one that I mean I think everybody kind of gets the idea of it was crazy idea to do that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We ended up having a couple of days of weather and then mechanical issues, you know, that would cause us a day or two. And then eventually we got it back to North Carolina <laughs> where we have it now. It is a fun little plane to fly. It has a 65 horsepower, two and a half stroke engine um, that runs the pusher part of the, um, or the propeller in the back that makes it a pusher. Technically it's a tailwheel, but because the, the propellers behind you, it, in, and instead of in front, like a tractor type uh, tailwheel, it's a pusher tailwheel. And so once you rev the engine up, the airstream starts going across the rudder. So you have rudder control immediately once you push your uh, power in. So it's, it's a different type of tailwheel experience than the traditional tractor where the props in the very front of the plane and the rudders in the very back. And so you don't get that rudder authority until you've got some speed going down the runway. All right. So Michael Weatherspoon says, amazing, Cheryl. Greetings from Southern Pines. Oh, wow. Lots of people in the North Carolina area. <laughs> and I want to welcome Kevin Can Fly. He's stopped in to say hi to us. Thanks, Kevin. And Angela is in here. And Wendy and Justin have been in here chatting. And there was a question. Hang on. I marked it. Okay. I think. Oh, here. Walter from Australia says, question for Cheryl, do the balloons soar in the thermals as well? Oh, absolutely not. It was uh, what we call a sled ride that morning. The balloons can't handle thermals, uh, hot air balloons. So you only get to fly with them when it's smooth, calm air. Uh, so, but... We were 4,000 feet above them on takeoff, so it was a good 25-minute sled ride, you know, from the top down to the bottom. So we spent probably a good 10, 15 minutes flying with the balloons. Oh, wow. So if you give us one minute, I'm going to solo sure. on Steve because they're doing the new uh, virtual flying at the okay. fly-in. Steve, who is flying right now? Steve, go off mute. I'll unmute you. Maybe, maybe not. Steve, there. What? Who who is flying right now on that virtual? That machine? would be Deanna Lucky. Oh. I finally got her on your show. I told you I would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> so can't wait to meet her sometime too. All right. Well, put it back on the screen. We want to see the virtual screen and what she's doing. Please. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Keep looking straight ahead. Oh, so it doesn't really swing her around, though. Yeah, it'll roll too easily if you bury one break. Okay, but you yeah. can do some swing over. Nice. All right. Back with you, Cheryl. That's pretty neat. I wanted to try something like that down at Bad Apples this spring, but... The time that Dewey and I went down there, the guy says, "Oh, I'm going to eat a hamburger." <laughs> <laughs> Remember that, Dewey? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Did you see any other 
um, questions in the chat. Um, I haven't yet. Can you crash on the simulator? Yeah, you can. But can you just to tell you how realistic it feels, I mean, it doesn't, totally, it flies more like an airplane. Like if you do maneuvers, that would cause you to gift wrap. It won't gift wrap you. But just a little bit ago, Deanna's just like, oh man, this is amazing. And I mean, she's been doing this a long time. So I, th I think it'll be pretty in interesting to try that. Let's try it. It's the next fly in. So here you go, Cheryl. Um, James and Michael are trying to set up a meet to Whispering Pines Fire Department field and fly sometime. So oh, you'll have to go out and meet them when you get back home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, another, oh, sorry. Hillary, um, just jumping in. Cheryl, your hair, oh, that wasn't the one. Your hair is so cute. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to be retired. <laughs> to do with my hair. Yep. And Kevin Can Fly asked, how long has Cheryl been in aviation? Well, I started skydiving in 96, got my pilot slide, or 94, I'm sorry, skydiving 94, uh, flying 90, or uh, private pilot was 96. Um, then I've got my instrument, and my commercial rating now. And then uh, started uh, paragliding in 2014. I think my first base jump was probably 2012, maybe. Um, I've got my H2 uh, with hang gliding. Um, and uh, my husband so, and I... Go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. My husband and I, as far as uh, with the flying thing, we decided that instead of doing biannual flight reviews, which now they call flight reviews, but you know, every two years you have to have a flight review with a flight instructor. Rather than go to the traditional one, we thought, well, let's just get a new rating every two years if we can. So we've got our weight shift trike ratings. We've got our gyrocopter ratings. We've got our seaplane ratings. Um, tailwheel endorsements. Um, I think uh, we're looking, he wants to do, go ahead and do a sailplane uh, rating. Uh, that, that'll that be probably this year. Um, but yeah, it's kind of fun. You know, if you, rather than do the traditional flight review, just go get another rating. Why not? You know? So I was going to say, um, if you're interested in going out to California, um, go out to San Jose. We had, um, I had met during the Oshkosh EAA. I okay. met um, Takeo and um, his wife, Maceo, and ah. they are both hang gliders. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, and they do that um, out in the San Jose area. So, and they're on Facebook. So, and seems like, and he's a general aviation pilot and crazy stunt flying and stuff like that. And uh, they do uh, paragliding out there also with another group. And uh, then they play around with the hang gliders. So I can give you their names afterwards, you know, and you can contact them on Facebook if you're, if you want also. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, all, all aviation, I mean, I just love all the air sports and I think they all kind of help lend into each other. You know, they, they, uh, they're not the same, but, you know, understanding uh, aerodynamics, understanding the wind, understanding the weather, it, it helps with all of them. Yep. Um, Kevin had, I think, another question and... What's your favorite part of aviation? Ooh. Well, my first love was always skydiving. And I, I still, you know, I actively compete in skydiving. So I, I enjoy that. But I am starting to enjoy my sod girl paragliding more and more because I'm having more time to do it now. Um, and spinning this year, we went down to uh, Columbia in January of this year. 
And that's where I got to do my first really long cross country. It did like 35 miles. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. The first day we were there. And then we just got better after that. Um, that was a lot of fun. And then in March, we went to Brazil and getting to fly in the mountains there was amazing. Wow. Yeah, just beautiful green and lush fields, and nice horse fields to land in. That sounds neat. Yeah. That Tell us lot. about your base jump in West Virginia. Yeah. Oh, that was so. I uh, I had been to base, uh, Bridge Day is uh, um, it, it, once a year in West Virginia. It's legal to jump off of the New River Gorge Bridge, and they call it Bridge Day. And so I had been two years in a row and my mother said, you know, that looks like fun. I think I'd want to do that. And I said, are you sure? She said, yeah, yeah, I want to do it. She'd already done a tandem skydive. So are you sure you really want to do this? I said, because I can arrange for you to do a tandem skydive or a tandem, I'm sorry, tandem base jump. She's like, yeah, 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 I want to do that. So I put her name in the hat to, to do the tandem uh, base jump. The guy was going to do 10 that year. Well, sure enough, she got selected as the 10th person. And so we go down to West Virginia. My husband comes too. He's just there to observe. He won't face jump. And so I got to leave the bridge at the same time mom did. So we're side by side. She's with her tandem master, you know, and I'm, I'm right beside her. And so we get to exit at the same time. Now, understand at that point, my mama was 70 years old. Now, since she was going to have to land in the water with the tandem master, he won't bring the, um, the tandems into the rocky area where you can land. And that's where I had landed the other years. And so since she was going to land in the water, I said, well, you know, I'll land in the water too. Now, it's really well organized. So when you get ready to jump, they ask you, are you going to land in the water or not? And I said, yeah, I'm going to land in the water, so is she. And they have boats to come pick you up as soon as you hit that water. Well, let me tell you what, that water was so cold. I did not realize, <laughs> whoa. So I landed, you, you, if, if you've got the video, you can hear me go, whoa, after I land. And I get in the boat really quickly because it was freaking cold. And then my mom lands, right, gets out. We do all the hugs and all that stuff. And we're both soaking wet. Well, my husband had brought down clothes from up top for us, right? And so we went behind a truck. Now, here's me and my 70-year-old mama changing our clothes at the bottom of the bridge behind a truck door. Wow. <laughs> so we've got a 79-year-old lady that wants to do a tandem paramotor. Um, oh, do it. Um, introductory flight uh, with my husband sometime. It's like instructional, instructional flight. <laughs> And uh, yeah. yeah, so and we've we've had Linda um, that's in the chat. She's she's done one and she screamed the entire time in joy, not uh, in fear at all. But oh, yeah. so she doesn't really talk about it much, though. It's kind of weird. <laughs> right. She never talks about it. <laughs> she mentions it every week on other shows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, anyway, um, any other questions for our guest? I think we went over a lot of stuff with her. Um, and I know you're getting ready to hopefully go fly. Are you going to go fly yeah. tomorrow morning, hopefully? I think the winds are still going to be too high tomorrow, but Friday's looking oh. perfect. So we should be oh, out there good. for sure. So how many people are, are at this event? So the captain is here at 350 pilots, if you can believe that. Wow. It's a lot of people event. that'll be here. Yeah. Should be a What's lot of people. What's the name of the event? What is Red the Rock event? It's called the Red Rocks oh. Flying in Monroe, Utah. Okay. And Hillary, are you up there also? Type in the chat and let us know if you're out there and maybe you can meet Cheryl. Hey, Sean. Hey, Sean. <laughs> huh. 
Um, James says, great show. Cheryl, see you around Wood Lake. Yeah, hope Night, so. James. Yeah. Oh, that'd be Maybe fun. you guys can connect sometime. Yeah. That'd All right. And, Sh and Cheryl, I'd not mention this because um, we were too busy chatting away during our before no, the she's, show. She's going to be in Moab. Oh, Still Moab? Her. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I was just going to say that if you want to stick around for a few minutes afterwards, if you want to bring your husband yeah. in and um, we'll shut down the show. And if anybody wants to join in, they're more than welcome to um, come on in and I'll just put the, hey, don't let you know. the link in the chat and you can join in and say hi. So if anybody doesn't have any other questions, um, Cheryl, where can we find you on social media? Um, I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram. Okay. And your husband um, does the videoing <laughs> on YouTube, right? <laughs> he puts it together. Yeah. All right. So hang on. I'm going to try to get the scrolling stuff out of the way. And um, Dweese, where can we find you? Um, YouTube at Dewey Smilstead, Facebook at Dewey Smilstead, and Wheezy RN on TikTok. Oh, also um, Wheezy RN on Instagram. Gotcha. All right. And Hot Buttered Steve. You can usually find me drunk, passed out in a ditch, covered in blood next to a dead deer. You're such a liar. <laughs> liar. All righty then. But anyways, um, Steve, make sure everybody stays safe down there the rest of the weekend and continue to have lots of fun. And I hope you continue to have great weather at Endless Foot Drag. I oh, wish I totally there. told a bad joke in the, the pilot's briefing because they're talking about doing like a Texas Hold'em like poker run where you fly at different spots, get a card and come back. Yeah. And I was like, well, if you want to spice it up, the other night I played poker with tarot cards and three people died, and I had a full house. <laughs> but I won't be able to make it on after, so you guys have a good night. And remember, we don't see you on the air. We'll see you in the air. Yeah. All right, guys. And if anybody is interested in sharing their story of how they got into the sky or fell out of the sky, just hit one of us up, and we'll get you on the show and share your story so you can help somebody else out that – is maybe contemplating doing this kind of crazy sports that we are into. So I guess in the meantime, keep doing some videos and we'll keep sharing stuff. You guys have a great night and thank you all for joining. Keep flying safe, guys. Calling you a friend.